everyone, how are you doing? My name is Aaron Bardoj and you are welcome to The Performer. The way of the intercepting fist, also known as Jeet Kundo. It's a hybrid of different martial arts and philosophies founded by Bruce Lee, the paragon martial artist of all time. Welcome to The Performer. We are counting down the top 10 best moves of Bruce Lee. JKD promotes minimalism in combat and fluidity. As Lee had suggested, one should be water. It also allows practitioners to incorporate their own fighting styles into already existing techniques, fulfilling its ethos of style with no style. Number 10. Philosophical Assertion in Fighting He believed philosophical assertions helped to train mentally when it came to finding harmony in fighting. He was a martial arts master, accomplished actor and filmmaker philosopher and innovator of what some people now call Bruce Lee calisthenics. And even though it's been nearly 40 years since his untimely death, his training techniques, muscle strength, duration, endurance and pure power remains a legendary icon in the world of martial arts and fitness. Today a wide range of training programs are based on the principles of Bruce Lee calisthenics. And he is the testament to the fact that you can get ripped by turning your own body into a workout machine. Number 9. Powerful Self-Defense System His self-defense system was inspired from Tai Chi, which is not only about resisting attacks but also about first yielding to the attack. The strategy of Tai Chi is to flow around obstacles and to redirect the energy of an incoming attack back outward. This is a trademark of Tai Chi and a teaching that differentiates it from many other types of martial arts. Lee took note of its powerful self-defense system which put emphasis on arm and hand techniques by twisting the upper torso. The philosophy of Tai Chi Chuan is that if one uses hardness to resist violent force then both sides are certainly to be injured at least to some degree. Such injury according to Tai Chi Chuan is a natural consequence of meeting brute force with brute force. Instead, students are taught not to directly fight or resist an incoming force but to meet it in softness and follow its motion while remaining in physical contact until the incoming force of attack exhausts itself or can be safely redirected. Number 8. On Guard Position His on guard positions were inspired by fencing stances. In fencing bout, a great deal depends on being in the right place at the right time. Fencers constantly maneuver in and out of each other's range, accelerating, decelerating and changing directions and so on. All this has to be done with minimum effort and maximum grace, which makes footwork arguably the most important aspect of a fencer's training regimen. In contemporary sport, fencing defense by footwork usually takes the shape of moving either directly away from your opponent or directly towards him or her. Number 7. Feet in Boxing Stance Boxing stance and foot placement determine the effectiveness of offense, defense and footwork. It maintains power and defense, range and balance, flexibility and security, stability and mobility. The proper boxing stance gives solid power in each hand but still allows efficient defense to counter punch. The proper boxing stance gives good reach with both hands without making reach to land punches or vulnerable to getting pushed off balance. The correct boxing stance will allow throwing a wider variety of punches without leaving too exposed. Lastly, the right boxing stance allows standing firm on the ground but still having the ability to move away if needed. Again, the perfect stance is balanced. It gives strength without exposing. Number 6. Theory of Centerline He took inspiration of the centerline theory from Wing Chun. In a fight, he always protected it by creating momentum. If centerline is exploited, fighter loses the battle. The centerline is sacred to the Wing Chun warrior. In an assault, it becomes sole focus of attention to both attack and defense the centerline. Everything in the forms and drills relate back to the centerline. So, before you learn any Wing Chun technique, it is vital to understand centerline theory. The centerline is an imaginary line drawn vertically down the middle of someone's body when they are in a standing position and the area that is right in front of that body and the line. It has been said that whoever controls the centerline controls the actual fight itself. In the Tao of Jeet Kundo, the three main philosophies of the centerline are if you control the centerline, you control the fight. Occupy the centerline to remain in control of it. 
Defend your own center line to remain in control of it while simultaneously controlling the center line of your opponent. Number 5 Filipino Stick Fight His nunchuck skill is inspired by Filipino stick fighting. Also known as Eskrima, Ernest and Kali is the national sport and martial art of the Philippines. The three are roughly interchangeable umbrella terms for the traditional martial arts of the Philippines. Filipino martial arts or FMA that emphasizes weapon-based fighting with sticks, knives, bladed weapons and various improvised weapons. Number 4 Flying Kick Effective accomplishment of a flying kick relies on a mental preparation combined with an athletic condition. For instance, a typical element of the preparation consists in mentally exercising and visualizing the flying kick before its execution. A flying kick correctly performed requires falling on feet while keeping balance. In movies, yes, he used the flying kicks for theatrical purposes. He would have never used one in real life. He really did not need to. A pendulum sidekick to the midsection from Bruce Lee would probably result in the world of pain. Third is spinning hook kick. The spinning hook kick is used in many martial arts such as Wing Chun and Karate. However, Bruce Lee learned this particular kick from Jun Ri, a 10th degree black belt holder in Taekwondo. Taekwondo is a Korean martial art that emphasizes on kicking due to their belief that the foot is the most powerful part of the human body. In fact, Taekwondo contains the most kicks out of any martial art. Bruce was especially fond of the kicking techniques of Taekwondo and sought to incorporate them into his movies, which had an overwhelming positive effect on audiences. In the movies, Bruce uses this kick frequently as an elusive counter-attack for a roundhouse or a sidekick. The spinning hook kick is notably featured in two of Bruce's movies, Way of the Dragon and Enter the Dragon, as it is used by Bruce against notable opponents such as Bob Wall and Chuck Norris. The second, sidekick. He could hit his opponent repeatedly in less than two seconds. Bruce Lee's sidekick with extensive research came equivalent to a truck hitting you at 50 miles per hour. Read his book, Fighting Method. He always seemed to be doing that all the time in his films. He specifically refers to the sidekick as the best or most useful kick also. Look at the volume on street self-defense. It's almost comical. His answer to just about every situation is a sidekick usually low line. That's probably because a sidekick is a simple and direct move, exactly the philosophy of JKD. It develops stabilizing and supporting muscles, enabling greater stability, accuracy, efficiency and efficacy in kicks when they are performed at combat speed. The sidekick has been a staple of Kung Fu flicks since long before Lee got onto the scene. But for Lee, the sidekick was an obsession. Every movie he made, he showed it off. The sidekick exists in Wing Chun but it was when Lee met the Taekwondo practitioner Jun Guri and asked him for pointers that he truly came to master the kick. Over the last few decades, martial artists and fighters of all persuasions have kicked the blazes out of bags and shields trying to produce the same force exerted by this relatively small and light man. What are they missing? They are missing Bruce's core stabilizing muscle strength. They can do fast kicks but not slow ones. The number one, one inch punch. The one inch punch was made popular in the West when demonstrated by Bruce Lee at the Long Beach International Karate Championships in 1964. Bruce Lee learned the technique from his Wing Chun training in Hong Kong. He used the art of Wing Chun as his basis of the art he founded Jeet Kune Do. The one inch punch is a skill which uses Fajin, translated as explosive power, to generate tremendous amounts of impact force at extremely close distances. This burst effect had been common in Nijia forms. When performing this one inch punch, the practitioner stands with his fist very close to the target. The distance depends on the skill of the practitioner, usually from 0 to 6 inches. A quick movement of the wrist produces the force needed. The wrist is held with the knuckles facing out on a vertical axis. The wrist is then moved up and a strike is produced with the bottom two knuckles. The target in such demonstrations varies. Sometimes it is a fellow practitioner holding a phone book on the chest and sometimes wooden boards can be broken. Thanks for watching the performer. What are your top 10 favorite Bruce Lee's moves? For more videos of amazing top 10 facts, subscribe, like, share and make sure to write your comments below. See you soon in the next episode, have a nice time and take care.